Hello and welcome to the first video on the new RNC Handmade YouTube channel. The video you're about to watch is covering the build of an oak bath caddy, which I made for my wife this Christmas. For the first video on the channel, I wanted to cover something a little bit on the simpler side, partly because this is the first time I've ever filmed myself making something, and I've never edited a video before either. So. My logic was, by going with something straightforward, I'm going to hopefully be able to cover everything and not miss anything fundamental, which should result in a coherent video which is reasonably enjoyable to watch. I hope. Preparing the wood for this project was fairly straightforward. The board that I had uh, was planed on one face and pretty flat. There wasn't really any discernible bow or cup to the board at all. This was useful because whilst I did need to plane off the rough sawn face, I didn't want to lose too much in the way of thickness because of the slot which we'll be cutting into the board to house a phone or tablet that slot needs to be as deep as possible, so not having to do excessive planing was very useful in this instance. So now with both faces of the boards mechanically planed, I just wanted to go over them briefly with a hand plane just to give a nice, even, consistent finish. I think the planer blades on my machine need replacing, but with a hand plane, I ended up with a nice, nice finish, which was ready for sanding later on. Now that we have a pretty clean board to work with, I'm moving on to marking out the positions of the various holes and slots which are going to make up the functionality of the bath caddy. So with this particular design, we've got two holes cut out for candles, a slot for a tablet or phone, and a combination drink or cup and wine glass holder. I mean, you could go more more complicated or more basic with this is completely up to you, the person you're making it for, and your own personal tastes, but mine I think sits in kind of middle of the road. So this is a visual representation of the design that we're aiming for. I mentioned a moment ago that you've gone relatively simple with the design. A couple of candle holders, somewhere to put your drink and a slot for a device of some description. The bath caddy is 85cm wide and 24cm deep. I wanted to make it as deep as possible, partly for stability but also so that other things, you know, besides candles and drinks could be stored on top of it if needed. The candle holes in this instance are being bored out of 47 millimeters in diameter. This is to house some glass candle holders which I've purchased for use with this particular design. I think a standard tea light is about 38 millimeters. Obviously you can adapt the size of these holes to match the particular application that you're going for. The hole for the mug, um, I couldn't find a standard mug diameter, I don't know if such a thing exists, so I measured a few of the mugs we have in the house 
and came up with 85mm as a, a reasonable dimension for this particular cutout. I'll leave a link to the design file in the description of the video if you wanted to use it as a base point for your own project. I'm using a top bearing pattern bit to follow the template in order to produce these, these cuts. Uh, to make life easier on the bit, I've started off by doing a, a sort of shallower cut and hogging out as much of the inner material as possible before moving the bit down to a depth where the bearing can engage the template. If you don't have a template, then a force in a bit is generally going to be fine for making things like this. The reason I chose to go with a router template was so that I didn't end up with the, the point and the kind of groove around the circumference that you often get with a Forstner bit. You can also make a template similar to this by getting a scrap piece of plywood, MDF, anything flat and reasonably thick and using a Forstner bit to cut out the hole. And then you can use that as your template. I created the router template for this project using my laser cutter. I appreciate this isn't a tool which everybody's going to have access to, but it does appear to be more and more common these days for people to have a laser or a CNC router at their disposal. So I wanted to just include a little bit of information about this for the people that it is applicable to. The, the template was really useful, especially for the larger holes, which you not likely to have a drill bit large enough lying around to use or even be able to source in the first place. And the ability to create a template for this specific project with the exact hole dimensions and slots that I needed was incredibly useful. If you have a laser cutter and you'd like to create this template, you can download the files for free from my website. The link to that will be in the description of the video. Before cutting out the larger hole for the drinks holder, I'm just drilling out a center hole so that when I've cut the larger recess out, I've got a center point for drilling the smaller hole for the glass aspect of the drink holder. After this, it's just a case of marking out and rooting out all of the remaining slots and recesses. I used the 32mm force in a bit to bore out the centre of the drink holder. Uh, this will enable a glass to be slid in once the slot has been cut. Uh, unfortunately my phone decided to eat the video of me cutting the slot. I did this on a bandsaw. Uh, if you don't have a bandsaw you could use a handsaw for this or a router. There's many different ways of cutting the slot as long as you cut it straight. That's all that matters. I'm finishing off all the edges with a small chamfer. One thing to bear in mind if you want to go down this route either with a chamfer or round over is you need to make sure you bore your holes and slots deep enough that you can get the bit um, into the recess because you've got the bit and then the bearing and the retaining nut that sit underneath it which means you need to have a reasonable amount of clearance to be able to get that bit in there that's not to say you couldn't do this by hand but if you were planning to use a router to finish off your edges then keep that in mind when you're making your holes So with the vast majority of the project finished now, all that's really left is to get everything sanded down. There's a few burn marks on some of the rooted edges. That's mainly down to me needing to buy some sharper bits, um, but nothing too bad. Nothing a bit of sanding won't take out. I had a pretty good finish on the surfaces due to using the hand plane earlier on in the project. So I went in at 180 grit for the sanding, a little bit heavier on the chamfered areas because the bit didn't leave as cleaner 
uh, face as the plane did, so the edges took a little bit more attention from a sanding perspective. But overall, five, ten minutes with a sander and a sanding block and everything was nice and smooth. For finish I chose to use Danish oil, uh, reasons being I really like the colour that it brings out in wood. It's also got varnish in it which is going to be really useful for this piece considering it's going to be used in a bathroom so there's going to be a reasonable amount of moisture and humidity uh, in the environment. Hopefully this will give a really good barrier for that. I put on four coats in total, kind of going on fairly liberally with each coat leaving for a little bit then wiping off the excess between coats I denibbed with 320 grit sandpaper. In hindsight considering the environment that this piece is going to be used in I probably would raise the grain before doing the Danish oil coats with a bit of water just to ensure that the smooth finish of the piece is retained for as long as possible. And that's about it for the build. Thanks for watching. It's been a lot of fun. I've learned a lot and I'm hoping to use what I have learned in the next video. I'll see you there.